Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Orbean Hardware and a brand new video. We're gonna talk about the best budget GPUs under $200 in 2022. Now in this video, we're not only going to discuss my top GPU recommendations worth considering, we'll also look at benchmarks showing you detailed performance in some of the most popular games so you get a good understanding how each GPU performs in case you decide to pull the trigger. So it's been over 12 months since we last did a graphics card buyer's guide and that is because the market has been completely upside down for the past two years. Things are however finally starting to look a slight bit better. Hopefully that will continue but I guess time will tell. Anyway, we're gonna start with the cheapest GPU first coming in at around $50 and work our way up to $200 and $200 is actually hitting the price to performance sweet spot pretty nicely. Now if you find anything you like, all graphics cards are linked up down below and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing, I release a new video up 2 to 3 times a week covering PC hardware, monitors as well as graphics card and benchmarks. With that said, let's dive into the video. So if you got a strict uh, limited budget and you're looking for the cheapest entry to PC gaming and you want to spend as little as possible whilst getting the most possible performance for your uh, dollars, I recommend having a look at the GT 1030 from Nvidia. Yes, guys, I am talking about this graphics card. Now before you start thinking I completely lost my mind, Please hear me out here. Yes, the GT 1030 is by no means an RTX 3080 killer. It is however a pretty interesting graphics card powerful enough to run a surprising number of games, sometimes even AAA titles at an FPS level that is actually acceptable. Unlike pretty much all other options around the $100 to the $150 mark, at least if you're looking to pick up a brand new GPU. Now if we turn our attention to the second hand market, you can find the GT 1030 for as low as $50 uh, to $60, which is actually about $20 below MSRP, in other words, a pretty good deal considering the ongoing GPU shortage. As a backup, AMD has the RX 550, which is also worth looking into, if you can find it around the same price range. If you end up picking up a GT 1030, make sure you pick up the GDDR5 variant, as there is a DDDR4 model that is performing significantly worse, but I will be sure to link up the best 1030 deal down below. With that said, let's look at the gaming performance and as we can see guys, at 720p low to medium graphics, games such as Fortnite, Rocket League, Rainbow Six, pretty much all eSports games runs on an average of over 100 FPS, while AAA titles such as Far Cry 5 in this example lands just below the 60 FPS mark. At 1080p we see that eSports games are still totally playable, while Far Cry 5 is now trailing a bit, still showing decent numbers at 30 FPS on average. Now to put things in perspective, the 1030 lands up between the Ryzen 5 5600G APU and the Radeon RX 550 from Team Red. Pretty impressive numbers for sure, but again typically not something that you want to play on for years, but definitely a possible stopgap until prices are back to normal. Let's move on and talk about my next graphics card. Now if you have a budget of about $120 to $150 to play with, I recommend having a look at the RX 570. Released back in 2017, the Radeon RX 570 is believe it or not still a very solid GPU worth considering in 2022. Maybe much thanks to this long dragged out GPU shortage. Anyway, right now this GPU can be found for around $120 to around $150 on the second hand market. And for that kind of money, you can also get a GTX 1050 Ti. However, the 570 is miles ahead when we are comparing the two. And in the end of the day, you shouldn't even consider the GTX 1050 Ti. Looking at the benchmarks, we see solid numbers across the board. The only slight issue I have with this GPU is the fact that it only comes equipped with 4 gigs of VRAM, which is now starting to become an issue in many games. 
Sure, in typical scenarios, the GPU won't really be powerful enough to crank the settings all the way up to, let's say, Ultra, but there are games nowadays starting to require at least 6GB, and so I want you guys to at least be aware of that. With that said, what if you have a total budget of $200? Well, in that case, you can actually get your hands on the RX 580, or if you rather pick Team Green, the GTX 1060. The GTX 1650 Super should also be considered around this price point, but we will get back to this GPU a little bit later. So if you're considering the $200 budget, you're actually hitting the price to performance sweet spot pretty nicely. So let's take a look at the performance. Despite both GPUs being a few years old, they still both perform great in today's modern games, managing to stay close to the Magic 60fps mark as long as you keep your favorite game at 1080p at around medium to high settings. Now these numbers are for the RX 580, but the GTX 1060 from Team Green is performing quite similar. In fact, based on my testing across multiple games, on average, they almost always end up neck and neck. Now, even 1440p gaming is possible if you keep your settings at low graphics. And so, if you can accept to play your favorite game at medium to high settings, you're gonna be quite happy with the performance you can expect out of these GPUs. Something to keep in mind here guys, it is important that you pick up the 8GB variant of the RX 580 and the 6GB variant of the GTX 1060 to get the best possible performance. Now let's talk about the GTX 1650 Super which can occasionally also be had around this price point on the second hand market. Usually you find this GPU slightly above $200 but if you are a bit lucky, snagging one below the $200 mark shouldn't be impossible. What makes this GPU slightly less appealing, despite performing a few percent better than the 580 or the 1060 is the fact that it only packs 4 gigs of VRAM. So keep this in mind guys, if you are considering the 1650 Super, you may consider only playing at 1080p resolution. So up until this point guys, we basically only talked about juiced GPUs from the second hand market, but what if you want to pick up a new one? Well, below $200. There is really nothing worth spending time on in my opinion. Now that being said, sitting slightly above the $200 mark, AMD has the RX 6500 XT, which is the cheapest gaming based GPU currently available. And this is the only GPU worth considering around the $200 mark if you want to buy a new one. Now you find this GPU linked up down below as well. If you got any questions, please let me know. I will do my best to help you guys out. In the meantime, watch either of these two videos. And I will see you guys in the next video.